thank you for the opportunity to be here with you today. Uh, when Almas and his friends visited Oulu about two years ago, we were very much hoping that uh, we could have some kind of cooperation in the future. And and here we are. This is this is a nice opportunity. So thank you for that. And I hope that uh, I can share you some some knowledge and and some insights about the topics that you have you have given me and i have something prepared for you so let me start by sharing the the presentation uh my name is aset basi hieta and you can call me basi if we have any kind of discussion here and um, i work as a vice principal in in all university teacher training school and our school is a, is a teacher training school where the students that study to become teachers in, in University of Oulu, they take the practice periods in, in our school. So we are part of the university, but we are also an ordinary school with, with ordinary pupils and, and students. A few more words about our school in a minute. My responsibility is the secondary school or lower secondary school or middle school, as, as the Americans say. So the pupils in, in my unit are from 13 to 16 years of age. I also have many kind, kinds of uh, projects going on beside the, the everyday work. I work in, in a curriculum team in our national agency for education and and the National Agency for Education prepares, for example, our national core curriculum. And I, I have been working on that. And, and at the present, we are working on renewing our, our assessment and, and assessment criteria. And I'm also a school book author. I, I've written several school books. Uh, for history and, and social studies and, and in, in my spare time I, I write and, and play music and, and follow ice hockey very closely and, and, and I try to play tennis. I'm not that good at that but I've been training to do that lately. So that's a few words about me and I think that uh, I was given given this task to to talk about educational policies because I've been involved in many kinds of projects nationally here in Finland. So I have some knowledge and and I think some some insight in in questions concerning educational policies in Finland. And program for today, uh, well, we are now doing the short introduction. And then we have two main topics. But before I go into them, I would like to explain these pictures. This is my home street on top picture. Um, the photo was taken last December. so. So that's what it looks like in the winter time here, but now it's still it's still green and and it looks like summer. But we are heading towards winter, of course. And the in the other picture, there's my dog, and um, well, it's therefore just the reason that I would like to I would like you to see my dog. So. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my dog. But uh, about the topics, uh, first we we talk about educational policies in Finland, and I think that it might take about an hour or so, and then uh, after that we'll have a short break, five minutes or so, and then I will share some something about strategic decisions 
concerning STEM education. And I try to remember to ask if you have any questions or comments in between the, the presentation, but feel free to write your comments on, on the chat board also. So I, I really would like to, to hear and, and, and see what you are thinking also. And, and, and I think important part of this on my side is, is to hear what, what, is, uh, what are the current topics about educational policies or, or STEM education in, in your country also. I'm, I'm here to learn also. That's a fun part of, of this work. But let's take a look now at the educational policies. Uh, at first, I'd like to tell something about our school. Uh, Oulu is in Finland, and Finland is in Northern Europe, and, and you see the, the little map on there. So we are neighboring Russia, and, and then there's Sweden and Norway also, our neighboring countries. North from, from Germany and Poland, that's where, where we live. And, and all is, is quite up north in, in Finland. Uh, the northern part of Finland is very sparsely populated. So, so even if it looks on the map that we are in the middle of the, the country, this is considered northern part of the Finland. And in our school, the director is, is Dr. Kari Kumpulainen. And uh, he sent his best regards to, to Almas and, and all, the, all the people that, that visited Oro um, about two years ago. And we have four units in our school. Uh, on the right hand side, there's a diagram or, or picture. Uh, the green parts are um, uh, the parts of Finnish education system that we have in our school. So we have two primary schools which have uh, combined about 650 pupils. And pupils in primary schools in Finland are from 7 to 12 years of age. And then we have secondary school, which is my responsibility. Uh, we have about 270 pupils and, and the pupils are from 13 to 16 years of age. The class size in, in our secondary school is from 19 to 21 to 25. Mm, very typical size is 21 or 22. Then we have upper secondary school where the students are from 16 to 19 years of age. And we have about 250 students in our upper secondary school. Uh, about 100 teachers work in our school. And uh, then uh, about 450, uh, might be 500 some years, uh, subject or classroom teacher trainings take their training periods in our school. So they are giving lessons and, and getting to know teachers' work, and our own teachers will, will tutor them and, and guide them. Uh, on the left, the picture, the old one, is there for our history. Uh, the roots of our school go back to year 1609. So our school is over 400 years old, and that's quite a long period in, in Finnish history. And in the middle picture, you'll see our school building as, as it is now. And here's our staff. And I am proud to show this picture because they are all, all very excellent people. And this is our educational mission, what we are trying to do, why, why we exist, so to say. We value diversity of life, equality, and community spirits as, a, as our main values. We want to be safe and forward-looking school that develops all the time. 
And we want our students to become widely able and responsible members of the society, wherever they might live. That's what we are trying to do. This is kind of a promise that that's this group of people gives to our pupils and their parents. About Finnish basic education then, uh, the legal side on, on the left-hand side of the slide, we have a constitution that defines certain uh, civic rights and, and human rights. And then we have Basic Education Act, which, which defines the, the ways we work in, in school and, and gives the, the guidelines, legal guidelines. Then there's Basic Education Decree given by the government and Finnish Agency for Education can, can also give certain regulations and it gives, as I said earlier, the, the national core curriculum. And then um, after the, the national core curriculum is given, the local curriculums are prepared according to the national core curriculum. A few words more about the curriculum system in, in next slide. But on the right hand side, our basic education takes nine years and it's targeted for the whole age group. We are trying to have inclusive schools so that uh, as many pupils as possible can uh, do their schoolwork in, in same schools. And, and the number of special schools for, for special children has gone down, uh, has diminished very drastically during the last 10 years in Finland. Usually the children go to, to the nearest school, uh, nearby their home, and the quality of schools in Finland is, is very consistent. Uh, we like to say that every school is, is a good school. We don't have ranking lists or anything like that in, in basic education. And uh, parents can apply to, to some other school also, but, but most of the, the children go to, go to schools nearby their homes. And after the basic education, the pupils get final certificate that they use to apply to secondary education or upper secondary school or vocational education. Basic education is completely free for the pupils. We are not allowed to take any payments from the pupils. So textbooks, teaching materials, even computers in our school, they are free for our pupils. Also school meals have been free in Finland for 70 years now or so. And that's something we are very proud of. After the Second World War, uh, Finland decided to, to give free school meals uh, to children. And, and that's, that's a great thing, even though Finland was, was quite a poor country back then. Uh, before the, the basic education starts, there's a one year long pre-primary education period. Sorry, I have to take a drink. And schools, so schools can provide also morning and afternoon activities for the, for the pupils. That's voluntary. And law requires us, the schools, to, to provide support for the children in school with any kind of difficulties. There might be learning difficulties or health or, or social difficulties, but we, we are required to offer support if any, any problem comes along. And when, when a child has taken our nine-year basic education program, uh, he or she should have um, abilities to, to go on with, with their studies. In, in upper secondary or vocational education. Is there anything you'd like to ask or comment at this point? 
I will move on. As I said, a few words about our curriculum system because I think it's, it's crucial to understand the system to understand Finnish school system, the Finnish basic education. So the National Agency for Education gives the core curriculum and the latest version has been published in, in 2016. So this is, this is the fourth year we are following the, the new curriculum. It is subject based, and uh, but we are trying to encourage cooperation between school subjects so that uh, the, the school subjects are not just uh, separate boxes in school. We, we try to offer the pupils phenomenon based studying that, that concerns many many school subjects and, and real life problems. So to make the learning more meaningful and, and make, make their motivation better. A uh, very important thing in, in our core curriculum is, is the broad-based competence or the, the transversal skills that the, the picture on, on the right-hand corner is, is, uh, is telling about, about these competencies. These are things that should be taught through every subject. For example, thinking and learning to learn. You must learn your thinking and learning skills in, in every subject and, and teachers have to remember that and take that into account. And all these aims to, for the student to be an active learner and take responsibility of their own learning and, and be more skillful learners because if you know how to learn uh, you that that's something you you can use for the rest rest of your life this is something that um, will do you good for the rest of your life there's also assessment criteria defined in the national core curriculum and according to the the national curriculum we prepare our own local curriculums. And, and in Finnish schools, we have quite a lot of freedom to decide for ourselves how we, we want to carry out the, the things that are defined in national curriculum. And I think that's good because um, there are, the areas in, in Finland are, are different and pupils are different. and, and the schools are different, so it's, I think it's good and it's one of the strengths we have in, in Finnish school system that we have a lot of freedom to decide for ourselves. Well, now I have gathered some, some current topics in, in educational policy in, in Finland, the, the things that we are discussing now that are the hot topics in, in Finnish education at the moment. And as the first one I picked, uh, the plan to prolong compulsory education in Finland. Uh, as you see, at the present, the compulsory education consists of Early, early childhood education, which uh, starts at the age of five or six, and then primary school to the age of 12, and, and then the lower secondary school to the age of 16. And our government wants to extend the compulsory education to the upper secondary education of or vocational training, so until the 18 years of age. So everyone after basic education would be obliged to take further education. You, you just couldn't drop out of education after basic education. Uh, at the present, there are 1,600 um, pupils that drop out 
the from the education after basic education and the the age group in in finland is about 60000 so 1600 pupils from 66 60000 60, pupils uh, don't uh, continue their studies after basic education now and and this uh, prolonging the compulsory education one thing it tries to do is that we would have fewer drops dropouts after basic education because there are very few jobs that you can go and do if you if you just have gone to, to basic education uh, you you should have more education to to do good in in the working life and if if uh, if if the compulsory education is is continued to 18 years of age it means that uh, we would have to provide free study material also in upper secondary school and vocational training uh, now the the students in upper secondary school and vocational training they are buying their own school books but if it becomes compulsory then then we'll have to provide the materials and and that's a big economic question but that also means more equality between the the students because now the 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 students ha that have a challenging background socially and economically they might have difficulties to to buy those study materials and and that's one one big reason for 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 this this thing that uh, the government wants to do now is there anything you'd like to comment or, or ask, ask about this okay let's move on uh, for the second topic about current uh, issues in in finland i picked pedagogical support in basic education we have this three tier system for for the support as i said earlier the law requires us to find ways to support the pupils if they have any kinds of problems and e every pupil in basic education receives general support so if they have some kind of difficulty we we are uh, we must find way to to help it can mean remedial teaching or, or meeting with the special education teacher or differentiation any way we can but everyone receives general support if they come up with any kind of problem if the problems are more severe then we can move on to intensified support and then we have to uh, plan it we we have to write pedagogical assessment to find what what the problems are and and then we make a learning plan where we where we plan how we help the, the pupil and then if the intensified support is not enough then we can move on to special support and and the main difference between intensified support and special support is that in intensified support the pupils are studying according to normal curriculum so they have normal objectives and and they are assessed according to normal curriculum but in special support they can have individual educational plan uh, that defines what they are studying what are the objectives and how they are assessed so they have they have their own unique curriculum in in special support and that's not possible in in general or intensified support and uh, government wants to extend this three-tier support system to upper secondary level and vocational training also so if 
if they extend the compulsory education and and this um, support system to also um, upper secondary level and, and vocational training, it will change the upper secondary and vocational education quite a lot. And it will take a lot more money. But this is um, this is something that we 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 in our government see see as a, as a good good goal to develop our education system. Uh, somebody has put something in in uh, chat, but unfortunately, I'm not able to read that. Is is it a question or comment or Kasim, Can you help me? Okay, maybe it's not meant for me. Equality, uh, that's something we have discussed in Finland because there are studies, there is research that shows that basic education does not promote equality as well as it used to do. Uh, uh, a few, a few decades ago, the, the education was the most important um, thing that explained uh, the, the employment and, and getting to, to better position in, in society. But now there are worrying signals that, for example, poverty uh, inherits from, from generation to generation. And there's an, I think, interesting publication on European level, European Union level, uh, about uh, the poverty and and how it inherits, and there's a, there's a link to that publication, and I think that that was quite quite interesting. Uh, one point that I took out of the publication is that uh, from the children with low level of education, about one third of them had. Uh, parents with low level of education also, but only 3.4% of the, the children with low level of education had parents with high level of education. So the high level of education seems to be inherited also. And I think there are many factors that explain this fact, but um, uh, I think the school system should be able to to balance this, it should be able to 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 make uh, the situation better and 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 shorten the gap between the the, the children and and the children with low low level of education and high level of education. And of course, there are factors outside school that have an effect on on what we can do in school. Uh, at the bottom, the, the diagram, it shows clearly that when the, the uh, finance crisis internationally began in 2008, the, the risk of poverty uh, was rising after that. And well, of course, in school, we, there's nothing that we can do about this international finance crisis but but we can try to find ways to soften the impact in our society and and try to find ways to to support the children who has risk of poverty or who are from from socially and economically challenging backgrounds About learning outcomes in Finland, uh, when PISA survey started 15 or so years ago, we were quite surprised in, in Finland how good our results were. Because we, we were on the top, we were the best in the world. And uh, Mr. Pass, I'm very okay. sorry for interrupting you. Uh, please, can you choose the english uh english function in the bottom in the uh on the uh, on, on the function on the bottom of the screen uh, on the function of interpretation 
Okay, I try. Um, I think I must quit the share. We were quite surprised, and but of course are also proud about our good results. And even though there has been um, a sl slight downhill in, in the results, we, we still do very good in, in piece of service. And overall results in, in our school systems are very good. But, and, and one of our strengths, as I said earlier, is that only minor differences between schools and between areas are, are found in, in Finland. Every school the kids go in Finland, it's quite good, at least quite good. I think we all, all our schools in basic education are quite good. And even though the, the impact of, of socioeconomic background has, has grown in Finland, it still is smaller than in, in other countries that took part in this. But there are also worrying things. The gap between the best and, and the weakest readers is growing and, and the Finnish language teachers say that uh, in, in the earlier days there used to, used to be weak readers and, and good readers and, and in between so that they, they could read but they are not excellent. But now there are weak readers and excellent readers and nothing in, in between. So uh, the gap between the good readers and, and the, the excellent, uh, the good readers and the, the weak readers has grown. And boys are the weak readers. Usually girls read well and, and boys don't. Of course, there are exceptions when, when you talk about individual students, but, but that's the big big picture and that's that's very worrying signal for for us and as i said earlier the impact of socio-economic background seems to be growing and and the school does not promote equality as well as as it used to do and the finnish basic education uh, well it's been said that it's it's a school for girls more than for boys and i think there might be some truth to that uh, girls are more motivated and, and confident in their own learning according to several studies and beliefs about their own abilities in learning have greater impact on learning in finland than in other countries so the boys don't believe that they can do well in school and then they don't do well in school. And that's that's something that we we, we would have to cut that, that vicious circle. But I found one uh, interesting study and, and the citation on the right hand side is, is from that study. Because you many times you hear that uh, the girls are, are good readers and, and they have confidence in their own learning and they are motivated. But I think important point is to remember that the, 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 these things are not, not uh, stable. They change over the years. And there, there are many signals that are quite worrying about girls' mental health in school. The girls might demand too much of themselves and, and and then have some kind of mental problems, depression or whatever. And this this study, there's a link to that study, and I I, I think it would be a good idea to take a look at that. It it found that uh, the belief belief in in one's capabilities change uh, during the school times. The high academic self-concept on fifth grade did not predict high self-concept on ninth grade. There was a change. How can we maintain the high academic self-concept throughout the, the school years? That's it. I think that's quite an important question. Uh, then 
the number of, of pupils and schools in the future is presumed to go down in Finland. The age groups in recent years have, have gone going to be smaller and smaller. And there's a prediction that, that many schools will disappear in the near future in, in, uh, in 15 or 20 years or so. And this, this is the, the table that shows the, the progress during the last about 10 years. So the number of, of uh, primary schools has, has gone down from about 2,200 to about uh, 1,500. And number of uh, uh, lower secondary schools, the yellow line has gone down also. What has, uh, there has been more, or there's been more, uh, comprehensive schools that have all the classes in basic education. That, that number has gone up a bit, but as you see, the total number of schools has diminished quite a lot during the 10 years or so. And this trend is predicted to, to continue uh, in in next 15 or, or 20 years. There's a major decrease in, in school age children in the next 10 years. Uh, maybe I should stop here if you have any questions or, or comments. Okay, I will move on. Some words about assessment. Uh, Curriculum-wise, when talking about curriculum, this has been a very hot topic in Finland after the present curriculum was published in, in 2016. There were many, I think, misconceptions about assessment after the, the curriculum was published. And uh, we, in different schools, there was, there was different kinds of systems developed to to assess almost everything the teachers would have to click uh, 2000 times in in some digital systems and give some kind of assessment information to the system it was very time consuming and <coughs> and and uh, um, the good that it produced it was was really questionable so uh, the, the assessment chapter was updated um, this year in our national core curriculum. <clears throat> so the cu curriculum was only four years old when we had to do the assessment uh, chapter all over again and, and, and renew it. And, and the first version of the assessment chapter was not that good, in my opinion. There were many good things also, but, but, um, but it, it brought up, um, in my opinion, inter interpretations that were not that good. So it's much more clear now in my opinion, and much more useful. It, it's, uh, it's better in instruction to schools as far as the assessment goes. And next year, uh, the National Agency for Education is going to publish new criteria for the final assessment. Mm, as I said in the beginning of, of the presentation, the pupils get a final certificate after the basic education and the grades to the final certificate are given by the, this criteria. And traditionally, we've only had criteria for grade eight, which is good performance, good knowledge. And this is one uh, 
example that I took from from social studies curriculum and the good performance have been defined as in in this uh, example the, the the goal the aim is to encourage the pupil to become entrepreneurial and responsible economic actor with knowledge of entrepreneurship and working life as well as the opportunities provided by them and with the ability to plan his or her own future. So the good knowledge um, about this is that pupil can explain the meaning of entrepreneurship and working life in society. And teachers uh, must use this criteria, but it's easy to understand if you have only the grade eight from scale in a scale from from four to ten if you have only grade eight defined it's very tough it's very hard for the teachers to decide what is the the grade for the pupil is it six or seven or five five is the first first accepted to first passing grade and ten is excellent so we have prepared new criteria for grades five which is the first pass and and then grade seven and grade nine so the the teachers have have uh, better um knowledge and, and better criteria when they decide the the grades for the the final certificate the stu study showed that the there has been the, there might have been two grades difference between different schools with same knowledge the the pupil could have get grade seven in in some school and, and grade nine in some school and and that's a big equality issue because they use those grades to apply to secondary education so we hope that this new criteria will help help to give more more equal and more precise grades to the final certificate and this is how we think about the assessment in in general um, i have narrowed it down to four targets why we are doing this assessment work what we are trying to achieve with the assessment. Well, we are trying to achieve that the pupils can define their own learning targets so that they know how they are assessed and, and what is assessed during a course or during a lesson. And, and teachers must clear that out to the, the pupils. And then the, what we are trying to achieve also is that the pupils can develop their learning skills. If they get feedback from teachers, from other pupils, and, and they might assess themselves, they might find out what what are they doing well. Well, this is I, I learned this way, and and this is this is good for me. But they also learn that uh, I'm not that good in this, so I, I could become better in in this or that. So then they must receive feedback about their learning to be able to develop their learning skills. And then the parents should also be able to support the studies at home. And to be able to do that, they, they must know what we are doing in school, what we are trying to do in school and how the, the children are doing in school. So we must uh, provide parents with uh, sufficient inform information from school. and then. On top of this, all this formative assessment for learning, formative assessment is, is helping the, the pupils to become better learners. On top of this formative assessment for learning, we must do also summative assessment of learning, of the learning outcomes. What, what is the, the knowledge and skills of the pupils after they have studied something and give the grades and they should get the grades they deserve they should be equal they should be fair and, and